Hello, and thank you for listening. Our presentation, titled On-Court Determinants of NBA Salary, focuses on just that. What specific on-court skills and factors are statistically significant in determining an NBA player's salary? To begin, we'll provide some brief background about the NBA, player contracts, and the salaries associated with such contracts. First off, the NBA, which stands for the National Basketball Association, is comprised of 30 professional teams which play in the United States and Canada. The NBA is widely considered to be the most competitive and profitable basketball league in the world. Second, as a brief description of vocabulary, a contract is, on a basic level, a legal agreement between a player and a team in which the team guarantees a player a set amount of money to play for a set amount of years. Salary, then, is the promised amount of money a player earns for a given year, as stipulated in his contract. In 2013, the average NBA player's salary stood at 5.15 million U.S. dollars. This amount is the highest of the four North American major sports leagues, NHL for hockey, NBA for basketball, MLB for baseball, and NFL for football. Part of this arises from specific labor arrangements and agreements within the NBA. Part of it, too, arises from the fact that the NBA generates extremely high annual revenue with a comparatively low number of players playing in the league. Finally, part of this still is due to disparity in the size of the markets individual teams are located in. For example, cities like L.A., New York, and Chicago have a larger market than, say, Charlotte or Sacramento. However, though the average salary is high, there are still large inequalities between players. Some players make far more than others. For example, in this year alone, Blake Griffin of the LA Clippers will make almost $19 million from his contract, approximately 17 to 18 times the amount of teammate Byron Mullins. Many factors affect the salary inequality seen amongst NBA players. Anybody who has ever watched a game of basketball likely knows, and can likely tell, that a wide variety of skills and athletic traits are required to be successful at the game. Because salary represents the player's potential value to his team, there are often other considerations besides on-court performance, such as jersey sales and team chemistry. However, because on-court performance ultimately drives jersey sales and other value considerations, and due to time and data availability considerations, we only focus on quantifiable on-court factors in developing and estimating our model. Our main goal, then, is to use statistical techniques to ascertain what on-court factors are the main determinants of NBA player salary. To get an idea for possible models including all or some of our predictors, we conducted a best subset regression analysis. Our goal, again, was to maximize the R-squared value of our model while keeping our model relatively simple. By simple, I mean as few predictor variables as possible. Before explaining our method, there are some key points that need to be described. As mentioned previously, our goal was to develop a model that predicts the salary of a player based on statistics from the season prior to the signing of their existing contract. The reason for this is that, historically, contract figures are heavily based on a player's performance in their contract year, which is the year before their new contract. For example, J.J. Barea used an outstanding 2009-2010 to season to upgrade his $700,000 a year contract to a $4 million a year contract in the following year. Also, even though contracts are usually multi-year deals with differing salary figures for each year, we only focus on the base salary of a player in the first year of their contract due to the time-intensive nature of our data collection. Lastly, it's important to note that rookies were excluded from our analysis because they have no previous on-court performance to base their salary off. Rookies are paid based on a fixed rookie sale based on draft position. After the exclusion of rookies, we collected data on 217 NBA players. For our analysis, we use SportTrack.com to collect the salary statistics and use BasketballReference.com to collect all the available basic per game statistics on each player. For example, age, assists per game, and field goal percentage per game, as well as all of the possible advanced metrics on each player. For example, player efficiency rating, win shares, and usage rate. Since some of the advanced metrics are not common knowledge, I am going to describe them. The player efficiency rating is John Hollinger's all-in-one basketball rating. It boils down all of a player's contributions to one statistical number. The league average is 15. Win shares can be described as the amount of wins that can be attributed solely to that player and the usage rate is the percentage of time that the player has the ball when he is on the court. 
Here is the model recommended by our final best subsets analysis. This model was chosen because it had the highest R squared of all the models generated with a relatively small number of variables. As you can see, our model includes a squared term, game started. Our original model suggested by the best subsets analysis included game started. However, the residuals versus game started plot showed a slight wedge shape. Thus, we decided to do a data transformation where we squared the variable. This increased our R squared from 74% to 76.3% and helped our normal probability plot of the residuals look much more normal. Now, at first glance, some of the coefficients in our model might not make sense. For instance, it seems unlikely that the more points a player scores or the more minutes a player plays would correspond in a decrease in salary. However, this can be explained by the multicollinearity present in our model. Field goals attempted is highly correlated with both points and usage percentage. Note that the coefficient for field goals attempted is much greater than those for points or usage percentage. Thus, the supposed negative impact of points and usage percentage is counterbalanced by the larger positive impact of field goals. The same concept can be seen with the game started squared term and the minutes played term. A supposed negative effect of minutes played is counterbalanced by the larger squared term. These graphs just highlight the point that the variables are highly correlated. For example, field goals attempted and points have an R value of 0.975, while field goals attempted and usage rate has an R value of 0.819. Also, not pictured in this slide, minutes played and game started squared has a 0.791 R value. These high, R correlation, high correlations further highlight the previously discussed multicollinearity issues in our model. At this point, one must wonder why we included all of these terms in our model if they were so highly correlated. However, as previously mentioned, the goal of our project was to maximize our R squared value. Thus, we chose our model mainly based on the highest possible R squared value and the model suggested by our analysis included all of these variables. Here we see the normal probability plot for the model. Based on this plot, we can say that the residuals are roughly normally distributed. There is one outlier which is emphasized by the arrow. This is Kobe Bryant, the highest paid player in the league, who signed a contract with the Los Angeles Lakers with a base salary of $25 million. We ran an analysis excluding his salary, however it did not impact the R squared value. We feel as though it would be inappropriate to remove this point from the data because the goal of the model is to predict player salary based on on-court statistics, including for the salaries of star players. In basketball, players are divided into position based on size and skill set. Since there is a large difference between the responsibilities and therefore the on-court statistics of players of different positions, we thought it was possible that including position would increase the correlation of our model. We divided players into three positions, guard, forward, and center, and performed an extra sum of squares test. However, the extra sum of squares test for position was insignificant as seen by the F statistic given here, meaning position did not improve our model. A possible reason is that position is already mostly accounted for based on the statistics included in our model. That is to say, statistics such as field goals attempted, points, and usage percentage are heavily determined by a player's position. Therefore, position would hardly, if at all, better our existing model. These are a couple of graphs demonstrating the differences seen among the positions. On the graph on the left, we see salary versus game started squared. And on the right, we see salary versus field goals attempted per game. On neither graph is there a discernible difference among the positions. Conclusions and recommendations. Our model gave us an R-squared value of 76.3%. We consider this a success for our model given the multitude of factors that are considered when players and teams sign contracts. However, we recognize that improvements could be made to our model. Firstly, an improved model could include off-the-court statistics, such as jersey and merchandise sales, 
which are known to influence salary. Wrapping up, our model is also limited by our data collection methods. As a response variable, we use base salary in the first year of the contract. In reality, players often sign contracts that give them a slightly increasing salary over multiple years. Also, some players have bonuses and incentives written into their contracts. A model would ideally account for these more complex aspects of a contract. Also, we only collected performance statistics for players in their contract year. However, this can run into problems with players who get injured, play overseas, etc. In an improved model, performance in more years would be collected. Thank you.